you by one and because we want the ip address to stay in network byte order we go ahead and once again convert this new value to network byte order note that this value is in host byte order another call to h2 nl is going to convert this to network byte order we go back and return this value of course you know even this return was not really necessary because we actually modified using a pointer to the variable so anyway the variable has been updated i think you can remove this and make it more optimized so now we move to the next scanning technique which is the subnet scan now the subnet scan as one can imagine is going to take the ip address as well as a net mask as input now the ip address would be of the local host and the net mask is going to be of of course the network which has been configured so these are the two values which we talked about here the ip address and the net mask now please go back and refresh some of your networking basics so that uh, you know you sort of re get reminded of the fact that the way in which a computer finds out that a given ip address is in its subnet or not is basically by doing a bitwise and of the ip address of that computer with the net mask right and then it will go ahead and do a bitwise and of its own ip with the same net mask if both these values come out to be the same the assumption is that the computer for which it was searching for lies on the same network so what we do is uh, note that the input to subnet underscore scan is a structure of type in underscore addr if you remember socket programming basics you should not have too much of a problem reminding yourself of how this structure looks like but just to sort of refresh your memory let's have a look at what this is so note that first we look at a type called in underscore addr underscore t and that is nothing but an unsigned 32 bit 32 byte integer sorry 32 bit integer so then we look at the structure struct in underscore addr and that is nothing but having a single member s underscore addr of type in underscore addr underscore t what this essentially means is that structure in underscore addr is nothing but four bytes long and contains an element which is the only element in that structure and that is also four bytes long so let's quickly go back here so the first thing which we do is define a structure in underscore addr and call it victim now we go ahead and fill the ip address of the victim by taking our ip address and then anding it with the net mask now why are we doing this the reason is if you sort of look at the let's say this is our ip address 192.168.253.131 and this is the net mask 255 255 255 0 now when you do a bitwise and of both of these what would you get 255 is all ones hence 192 would stay as is so would 168 so would 253 but because the last value is 0 131 when added with 0 would give 0 so what the result would be would be 192.168.253.0 and this is basically the starting point to look out for computers which belong to the same subnet so this is actually to get the first IP address which belongs to our subnet now what we do is we do a while loop and check out uh, sorry we do a while loop and keep on incrementing the victim IP address once again as in the previous case for sequential scan we as the victim IP is in network byte order we go ahead and convert it to host byte order increase it by one and then once again convert it back to network byte order right and what we do while doing this while loop is that checking that currently the victim IP is it passed out the same network or not and the only way you can do it is by taking the victim IP anding it with the net mask and then checking out whether it actually belongs to our network and this is the definition right so the way this would work is that we would start with 192 168.253.0 and we would actually keep on incrementing this 253.0 253.1 and so on and so forth finally we would reach the value 
253 or 255 after which we would have the next value 254.0 right now at that point when we actually end it with the net mask you would see that we are not getting back 192.168.253.0 .2 instead we would get back 192.168.254.0 which is an indication that now this network does not belong to our subnet and therein we stop doing it so when we do the example it would be clear so let's go ahead and quickly look at the main function and run this so what we do here is that we first find out the host's IP address, the local IP address by calling get local IP. Then similarly we go ahead and find the net mask by calling get net mask. We go ahead and print both of these. Right? So let's actually run this exercise. output might be a little lengthy so let's just sort of store it in a log oops actually we forgot to give the inputs et at zero and let's say we want five ten sequential IPs to be formed so now let's look at the log Now the first thing as I mentioned was to find out the local IP address and the net mask now if you look at these two values you'll find that these are absolutely identical to this and that is what we want to do first right let's sort of go back to the code and then look at what we do next then we go ahead and seed the random number generator see this would come in handy while looking at the random generation scan but first we go ahead and do a sequential scan so what we do is we basically store the number of IP address we need to generate which is say 10 as we had given in the input in a value called counter and then we decrement that till it becomes 0 and for those 10 values we go ahead and do a sequential scan so what it does is it calls the sequential scan function with input as something called temp underscore IP now if you notice temp underscore IP is nothing but our local IP which we found out in the previous step so this local IP is now going to be incremented by 1 for 10 times and every time we increment it we go ahead and print the victim IP on the screen so this is how the sequential scan occurs let's try and let's look at the output which we had generated so the second would be the sequential scan so as you can notice this is our IP address and from here on for 10 values we keep on incrementing it so we get 132, 133, 134 and so on and so forth till 141 so this is the sequential scan the victim uh, the worm is actually going to seed the sequential scan function with an IP and from there on the IP address is going to be incremented by 1. Now let's look at what is up next and that is actually the subnet scan. Now note that in the case of subnet scan we just call subnet scan give it an IP and an S mask and the subnet scan is going to produce all the IPs on our subnet. So let's once again look at the output which we had produced. Subnet scan starts here and note that as we had discussed 192.168.253.131 and mask of 255.255.0 when handed would give us this value. And from there on we start incrementing the victim IP by 1 and for every time we actually check whether it belongs to our same subnet. and as you can notice this goes on of course till 255 and then stops so these are all the IPs in our current subnet why is this so interesting to a worm simple reason being that there is a high probability that most of these computers would actually be running and up now let's quickly look at the last scanning type and that is the random scan so in case of the random scan as well what we do is for 10 values we go ahead and generate a random IP of course for printing purposes we change it to host byte order and then go ahead and print it in ASCII format inet underscore n2a network to ASCII 
and then we print it so after that this exit so let's look at the output how it looked like the random scan here and as you can see the IPs which are produced by the random scan indeed are absolutely random right so this is another scanning technique which is used by a worm so uh, the point really is that there are a lot of other scanning techniques which are available hit list scanning in which actually you give it a chunk of addresses which you already know is going to contain a huge number of hosts you can do this by querying uh, some of the IP address maintaining databases APNIC etc etc so the point really is that the speed at which a worm propagates depends very much in the beginning at what scanning techniques is it using because as we all know that the 32 bit IP address space is has not been fully allocated and there are a lot of chunks missing as in people have the IP addresses are there but there are no computers it's unused at the very same time you also have a set of reserved IP addresses you know for every class A B and C you have a set of reserved IP addresses so when a worm is actually going to scan for all these then it might end up not find anything and just waste its time trying to connect to these PCs which do not exist on the internet as such so the correct way to go about it is to actually generate an IP address right first check whether that IP address is within the allocated domain now the way to do it is maybe have a hit list or go ahead and query uh, some of the routing tables etc to find out which are the active IP addresses which are available there are of course many other techniques but just to keep it very simple I am avoiding a discussion of those go ahead and search for worm scanning techniques on Google and I am sure you will end up finding a lot of resources as how to make your worm scanning code more powerful more robust and much more fast as far as locating existing IP addresses is concerned so with this I'll end this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll talk about how to use and exploit and try and understand uh, you know how to make it compatible in order to make a worm with the help of that exploit now to make the I would say context very current I'll try and use one of the latest exploits which have been released on the internet in my next example so I'm sure that's going to be really fun so keep watching most probably the next video would be updated within a day or two and I would see you there thank you